It's now been two days since Louisville lost 75-63 at home to Arkansas State. It's now two days until Louisville plays its next game at home against Pepperdine. Dead leg, simple question. Do you expect Kenny Payne to coach Louisville against Pepperdine this weekend? Uh, I, I, I can't answer that right now. Um, you want to just, uh, well, well, <laughs> you want to reboot would, and start uh, over? I don't, I would do I prefer you answer to? the questions. I don't, I don't have that. The, answer. the best way I was reading about podcast earlier, uh, earlier, and it said the best way to do a podcast is somebody asks somebody a question and the other person answer it. Yeah. Some, some questions aren't answerable though. You know, you know what I'm saying? You just did, not every question in this world is answerable. And right now it's not answerable. If Kenny Payne will be coaching in that game on Do Sunday. you think he will is answerable? Like I'm just asking you what you think. What do you think, Deadleg? I think he will. I think he will coach in that game. But I accept your answer. But um from what I gather on this is uh there is a process that has begun that will lead to Kenny Payne's termination. Um barring things that frankly shouldn't be relevant uh, at this point. What are we even doing here? Um but, uh, yeah, I think there's a chance that, that he doesn't get fired by Sunday. I think there's a chance he could be fired on Friday, frankly. Um, but it has reached a point of truly no return with Louisville basketball and Kenny Payne. If, if you are the subject of an opening segment where your employment is under question on December 15th on a college basketball podcast, no good. No good whatsoever. So, um, yeah, the Arkansas like the Arkansas State loss was just the latest, and it it came on the heels of a PR nightmare. Frankly, um, not nightmare, but but disaster. <laughs> when Karan Davis they announced that he was going into the transfer portal, and then he tweeted out, uh, "I never submitted any kind of paperwork to go into the transfer portal. I can't believe Louisville would put out a release like this. Yeah, you know, it's disappointing." But then, as sometimes happens in these situations, frankly, um. The school was trying to cover for the player because the, then Louisville, this is all in the hours leading up to the game on Wednesday. Then the school had to come back and put out a release saying, uh, actually, Davis was kicked off the team. <laughs> so we wish him nothing but the best. And he has expressed his intent to continue his college basketball playing career elsewhere. Um, so while trying to do him a favor, the, the player kind of was like, actually, I didn't do this. Well, if you're going to do that, you're going <laughs> to expose us like then we're going to actually say the reason why you're why you're not playing then he goes to the game sits in the stands by himself and the, and the and the kfc yum center didn't look more than 15 percent filled maybe um just a bad look overall you know for whatever reasons that happened however it happened it's just it was a microcosm of of what this program has become under kenny payne and now i think wheels are in motion to make a change and the question is um behind the scenes from a you know legal and all the proper protocol standpoint will it be done by sunday or some suggested you know don't put an interim out there and have him coach against kentucky i i think it's actually the exact opposite but whatever um after kentucky later next week it's in six days from now louisville's got the christmas break and if you're going to make a change maybe you make it then so we're heading toward that but i don't know what date's going to land Fewer people will mock your interim coach for getting his brains beat in by Kentucky than would mock Kenny Payne for getting oh, his brains beat in by Kentucky. It, it's time to start thinking about this differently. If you've listened to this podcast for a while, you know I would have done this after last season. I would have pulled the plug after one year. Um, sometimes you just know. You can see it. And it wasn't just that Louisville didn't win very many games last season. It was how they lost them. It was how the entire program was – was being run. Uh, this sport is filled with people who are kind men, um, well-liked people, accomplished assistants who simply are not equipped to run major college basketball programs. And respectfully, um, in 32 games last season, I saw all I needed to see uh, from Kenny Payne as it pertains to evaluating him to that standard. It was one blowout after another, one blowout after another. They finished 290th at Ken Palm, which was 85 spots lower than any other ACC school. 85 spots lower than anybody else in the ACC. And I talked to multiple ACC coaches last season, 
and I say all this respectfully, we're only talking about it because it's the thing to talk about, I'm not trying to pile on. But they were like, listen, the roster is not good, certainly not the Louisville standards, but they shouldn't be losing like this. Like that, that, that roster should not be getting beat like this and by the people who are beating it over and over again. Four and 28 last season, four and six this season. So Kenny Payne's now eight and 36 as Louisville's head coach with one win over a top 150 Ken Palm team and 13 losses to sub 150 Ken Palm teams. At a place like Louisville, frankly, you should have zero losses to sub 150 Ken Palm teams. He has, he has 13 in 44 games. Um, they're 203rd at Ken Palm right now. That's 33 spots than the other ACC team. So when I would, as the end of last season was approaching, suggest that they should go ahead and do this after one year, enough's enough. The most common thing I would hear is, well, you just can't do it. You just can't after one year. People have all these arbitrary rules of things you can and can't do, and this is one of them. Well, you can't fire somebody after one year. That's what people say. My question has always been simple. Why? Why can't you? If you know that this is bad and it's not going to get better, what is the point of continuing it? And then you'd hear things like, well, he's an alum and people love him and he helped us win a national championship as a player. He's also the first black coach in school history. That's a delicate topic. You just can't do it after one year. Okay. Well, we'll talk again after year two. And now we're not even to Christmas in year two. And this is the conversation. People believed that pulling the plug after one year would be wildly disrespectful, cruel to Kenny Payne. I actually think we've now reached the point where the opposite is true. The cruel thing isn't to ask for his resignation and accept it. The cruel thing is to allow him to keep going out there and doing a job he's not equipped to do and humiliating himself in that program. I, I mean that sincerely. I'm not trying to be mean. It, it has become a laughing stock now. It has become a joke, a meme. Every time Louisville plays, Kenny Payne is trending on XX, formerly known as Twitter. Sometimes it's Kenny Payne, P-A-I-N. There you go. Yeah. I, I, I think the nicest thing you could do for Kenny Payne right now, if you were the University of Louisville, if you really love him the way you say you do, the kindest thing you could do is tell him you're going to give him every penny you owe him and allow him to walk away from this disaster that he has created. Yeah, um, we'll see how quickly Louisville can do that. Uh, it's you, you, This is not tenable long-term. Um, Kenny Dickey tweeted, by the way, uh, Louisville, it's 12-point loss to Arkansas State, which had won just three games heading into that game. It was the first double-digit home loss by Louisville uh, to a team with a losing record since 1963. So, <laughs> you go back... 60 damn years, man, since we've had a loss statistically that could match what they did against Arkansas State. Um, and right now, I think I think Kenny Payne is four and four, six and six. He's 500. He's he's won as many games as he's lost against mid-major competition, and he's into year two. Not good whatsoever. He's lost 14 home games in that building. Um, he has been a subject. The program has been a subject in a negative light on this show at least four times since we opened the season and they haven't, you know, they, they played one game of note against Texas that they nearly won. You've had the, you know, <laughs> the viral press conference quotes. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just time to, uh, to give a change here. We'll see how quickly Josh Herod, the athletic director makes a move. Mike Rutherford, although by the way, uh, who has long since covered that program, lifelong fan of that program does radio in that city, uh, had a really good piece earlier this week on just the, the state of apathy with the fan base and what comes next. Um, everyone there knows what needs to be done, but it's just it truly is a, a matter of how long it takes to get this done. Uh, it would be true malpractice, in my opinion, to continue to have him coach leading up to that Kentucky game. Even if this isn't a, a world beating Kentucky team, it's an extremely good Kentucky team that's going to be at the Yum Center. There is no reason to, to continue to um the show whatsoever you if you didn't if you don't think get things buttoned up by sunday fine but get it done by tuesday at the latest here so that the team can prep and uh and you can let kenny Payne live with a little bit of peace here this is yeah and we are uh we are done here